Hello everybody, welcome back to my book vlog. Today we are discussing Young Chang's Bing's Big Sister, Little Sister, Red Sister, story of a set of three sisters from uh, 20th century China. Now, I love Young Chang. That's the first stop, and I really love this book. Uh, Wild Swans remains uh, one of the most influential books of my formative years, and I still have a great sense of affection and respect for that. And in a similar way, Yung Chang has continued that reputation for taking contemporary, for taking modern Chinese history and pivoting it, particularly retelling it from a female perspective. Uh, she is brilliant at that, and she is a phenomenally engaging writer. Again, another chunky book from her, but this is so easy to read. What we are focusing on here, though, is not as in Wild Swan's Young Chang's own family, but we're actually following a set of three sisters um, who are household names or were household names in uh, modern China, but were actually a revelation to me. These three sisters are Yi Ling, Qing Ling, and Mei Ling Song. That's the, 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 the Song sisters. Now, what's particularly fascinating about them is not only were they well-known and famous and influential, but actually the, the vicious uh, political divide and battles that uh, define 20th century China, actually these women spread across that divide and it actually formed cracks in their own relationship. So let's just get down to it. Yi Ling, the oldest sister, who's known as Big Sister, she became China's richest woman and particularly this is because she was um, a hugely influential and clever advisor, became an advisor to Chiang Kai-shek who was the head of the nationalist uh, movement in China in the first half of the 20th century and became a leader of the separate Chinese territory of Taiwan after they had been thrown off the mainland by Mao. Little sister, I think is Mei Ling, that's why I've got my glasses on because I'm just trying to remember it. Yeah, little sister Mei Ling, very attractive one, actually married Chiang Kai-shek. So she becomes the first lady of Taiwan and uh, is of pivotal influence to this hugely influential man. However, middle sister Qing Ling is red sister. So she um, married Sun Yat-sen, who is routinely referred to as the father of China, and became one of Mao Zedong's highest, most esteemed advisors, and pretty much the only woman in Mao's close circle, which is just extraordinary in itself. So what you have here are three women, three sisters, who are both sides of one of the most vicious political divides in 20th century history, not just China. Um, and of course, the not only the civil war between the nationalists and the communists divide the sisters, but the continuing split brings pressure on their relationships that completely divides them from each other. As uh, Red Sister gets uh, holed up in Beijing and Shivai and Shanghai, supporting Mao and developing the communist revolutions, frankly, just trying to stay alive in tumultuous and dangerous times. But her two sisters are ostracized, ex exiled from mainland China because of their links to their marriage and their links, political links to Chiang Kai-shek. And those two women have to build a life away from the country that they knew. Um, and also what's interesting is that both of them are stuck with with men. It's just very, the most interesting thing about this book with Yang Cheng, of course she does this fantastic personal uh, story of these three women. But what's fascinating is the extent to which these three women were so powerful, but their power was exercised through the men that they influenced. And that's really fascinating how in many ways these three women were ahead of their time but how much they were defined by men is of course reflecting of much of the polemics that we study around women in history is how can a woman be powerful away from men and these three certainly certainly had their challenges particularly the one that does probably most successfully of all is big sister who um, through corruption frankly uh, under Chiang Kai-shek and nationalist China builds a fortune and then astutely invests it and develops it till she is one of the richest women in the world. Um, it is vivid, it is fascinating. These are three colourful characters. You have um, those sisters who are fascinated by glamour, New York, uh, 
um, wooing Western politicians to the side of their particular side of Chinese history. You have those sisters who are incredibly politically mot motivated, who really feel passionately about the communist cause and the representation and the uplifting of the working peasants in China. Um, this is a real battle of wills, battle of personalities, and of course it's fascinating seeing this all crystallised into three sisters. Three sisters who just ended up in very separate lives, in very separate worlds, from the same position. Um, of course there's much revelation about Chinese history, and I do advise that you would have to know a little bit about 20th century Chinese history to keep abreast of um, the developments between Sun Yat-sen and the Nationalists, the involvement of Stalin and the rise of Mao. Um, at, if you didn't know anything about that, this book could be a little bit confusing in place um, because Young Chang does write with a little bit of assumption that you know what she's talking about. But nevertheless, I found this fascinating and I think Young Chang is an incredibly special writer and we are very lucky to have her.